on your seatbelt. Hello, Mr. Carricker. I'm James from Simply Safe. There, there, there's a there's a burglar coming in. We know. We saw him on the cameras. I'm here to help. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. I've got this. All good, Mr. Carricker. Thanks, James from Simply Safe. This episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is whole home protection that's affordable, easy to use, and it doesn't have any contracts or hidden fees. If you want to protect your home from bad guys, Simply Safe is having their best deals of the year right now, and you can get early access to the Black Friday deals and get 50% off their award-winning home security. Simply Safe allows you to customize the system to your home and is delivered straight to your door where you have easy access to it on an app on your phone. They offer sensors to cover every window and door, plus lots of other features like smoke detectors, water sensors, doorbell cameras, and HD cameras for indoors and outdoors, and smart door locks. Hey, don't look at my pen. With Simply Save Your House is professionally monitored 24 seven. They're always on team, is always ready to alert the authorities in case of emergency. It's easy to spend too much money with home security, but with Simply Save, it starts as low as 50 cents per day. Simply Safe has come out with a new wireless outdoor security camera with a 140 degree field of view that allows you to watch over your entire outdoor space in 1080p HD resolution, 8x zoom option, and a built in spotlight with color night vision. If it wasn't for Simply Safe, that burglar could have broken in and stolen all of my guns. Thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode of Demolition Ranch. Welcome to Off the Ranch. My name is Matt, and I'm glad that you guys are here. Today, busy day, but nothing like giant happening. There's a bunch of little things. For one, tomorrow is my oldest daughter's birthday, and she's turning 11 and that's crazy but I actually got to go pick up some cupcakes to take them to her school so that she can have a birthday celebration with all her friends at school right now we're gonna have her birthday we're gonna have like a camping birthday party tomorrow for her on the weekend but right now I got to go get a parking spot at the grocery store to get some cupcakes which doesn't sound like a big deal but I'm in an F-350 with a long bed and it's a dually which is hard to park by itself and then I have 22 foot trailer, yeah it's 22 feet, 22 foot trailer behind and I'm gonna try to park all this at the grocery store somewhere. Not looking promising over here. Hmm, I don't know. I was really hoping there'd be something, you know, like way back out here in the parking lot, but pfft, I, was, I need to take up like nine spots. I got nothing. There's only like four spots, it's just not an, wait! Oh man, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get so stuck there, but I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna go right there, spin around. This will work. Yeah, I found this old place. It's obviously not very busy today, <laughs> and uh, we fit, and no one will block me in. It's great. Mission accomplished. Dad of the year. Dad of the year. That's my name. I'm Dad of the year. I actually almost forgot. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really Dad of the year, but I remembered. So I'm really dad of the year. I just got to take it to school now, and then we can go do what we need to do today with that trailer. What? Gee, why are you free? Oh, parking brake. I'm not even driving. Just dropped off cupcakes and then drove to San Antonio. What I'm actually doing today is picking up the Impala. So the Impala, as you guys know, I said I wasn't going to work on it until we got the Bronco done, which we actually have been working on the Bronco. The Impala's been in a shop though, someone is working on that, not me, and the Bronco's actually at a shop as well right now, because uh, it's getting some final things done. The Impala though, if you'll remember, it is supposed to be able to raise all sides and it only raised one, only one Stay in the middle lane. piston worked on the Impala. Uh, so we went and took it to a lowrider shop here in San Antonio. They like special. Shh. This specializes in these kind of things, and they have rebuilt all the hydraulics, and it works now. Apparently, so we're gonna be my first time to see it. There she is. Dang! Look at that thing. <laughs> That's so good. Barely running, but the hydraulics work now. Yeah, buddy. What a beautiful car, so pretty. It needs a lot of work, a lot of work. But now the hydraulics work so we can actually get it on a trailer. Uh, baby girl, I might bop and I like me too. No 
roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen don't stop, shit ain't gon' feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl love my vibe and I like me too. And just like that, we got an Impala back, boys. 1964 Chevy Impala with hydraulics. It's gonna be the best burnout car you've ever seen. Okay, gotta take this. Gotta take this back to my car shop. And then we're actually going to pick up the Bronco as well. We'll show you what we did to that. Well, I also haven't showed you what I did to this yet either, but I'll show you when I get back. It's sick. For those who don't know about lowriders, the lowrider culture is insane. Like it's, it's different than regular car culture. Like normal car culture that I have been a part of is like you wanna make really cool cars that go really fast or really big trucks that go through a lot of mud. And then you have lowriders, which are totally different. They don't care about going off-road. They don't care about going fast. Lowriders is all about being low and slow and cool. And it's just, it's a wild thing. So it's mostly like a Latino kind of culture. Um, mostly a like East Coast. So like California, that's where it really all started. It was like, I think it was LA is where it really got big and still is really big today. I mean, it started I think back in the 70s, and it's still huge today, and especially with these old 64 Impalas. 64 is one of the, the main years for lowriders because it has an X frame, so it makes it really good for getting super low to the ground and mounting all the hydraulics and everything. I was raised by a Texan, my dad, and he loved muscle cars and he loved trucks. And so that's primarily how I was brought up is like, muscle cars with big V8s that make a lot of noise and go really fast and trucks that do the same thing. That's, that's what I think is cool. But like, I also love all like old classic American cars. And this is a you know, Chevy, a 1964 Chevy. And so like, I, I grew up going to car shows and looking at all these old cars, but never this. The car shows I went to never had low riders in them. I'm sure there were a lot in San Antonio, but I never went to those. I went to muscle car shows and I went to sports car shows and I went to truck shows. And so this is like something that I am totally new to, but I think is so cool. It's just a totally, a totally different take on a car culture. It's 180 degrees different from what I was used to, and I think what the majority of people are used to. Like everybody thinks, car guys, they like cars that are loud and fast. That's what most people like. These low riders, they're not really loud either. I mean, they, they do have some that are loud, but like it's all about being able to go up and down, being able to get super low, and then like attention to detail, which is why they have like the pinstriping all over the paint. And, like it's about being super pretty. Like that paint is always insane and shimmery and shiny. Some of them that you know the people spend like crazy amounts, like half a million dollars on, like the underside is all like professionally detailed and airbrushed or uh, engraved even, like frames will be engraved. Like it's insane, like the level you can get in the lowrider community. We're not going to that level. We won't be engraving the frame. Uh, we actually probably will be boxing and, or not boxing, but like beefing up the frame and you basically just plate it, you wrap it is what it's called. So you put steel all around your frame to make your frame twice as thick, twice as strong because you're putting weird angles on this thing whenever you lift it up and you crack your frame or bend your frame, that's a big pain in the butt. So we'll probably end up doing that later. Right now, these hydraulics we have, I, I was asking about them, you know, because I don't know anything about hydraulics. I was asking the guy at the shop. He was saying these are not good enough to hop it. He was like, you're not gonna get enough speed out of those hydraulics to hop it, to get it to like bounce off the ground or to three wheel it. He's like, I wouldn't do that with these. He's like, they're good hydraulics. You got good gears in them, good motors, but like, He's like, ah, I wouldn't do that. So our plan now is just to get it to where it all works and then we're gonna LS swap it. And so after, after the Bronco, we're gonna LS swap this thing and just have a low rider with a really fast engine and make it loud, but still can go up and down on hydraulics. So we're merging the muscle car and the low rider culture and community into my 1964 Chevy Impala, which I think is gonna be pretty sweet. We had them rebuild the pumps. Uh, they just needed new seals put in them and everything. And then they were also mounted all wrong. So they built a whole new rack for it and built us a rack for the batteries and everything. You, get in there. You're in, good boy. Now, let's see what you can do. Well, there's the front, we didn't have this before. It came off the ground. 
We can hop. He specifically told me not to hop it. Oh, dude. Jeez, it went well off the ground. Dude, <laughs> All right, pancake. That's everything now. Oh, this is sick. All right, we got front left. We got front right. Left rear. Yeah, I think you're trying to break it right now. <laughs> Here's where all the magic happens. So these batteries, the same batteries we had. We have six batteries back here. They rebuilt all the boxes though. The battery boxes were just hooked in to just thin sheet metal. So now they're actually hooked into the frame. You can see we got this big beefy metal box all around. They are strapped down with that big bar across the top. They rebuilt our pumps over here. Uh, the pumps are actually new. Is it pump, is that the right word? Yeah, all the <coughs> pumps are new, but the gear blocks are the same. And then two of the tanks, I think, were replaced, but he, looked the same. He said these gears were old school gears, but they're good. Yeah. Um, he put all new solenoids on here. Um, most of our hydraulic lines are new. And then we were just leaking out of like every little fitting here. So they redid everything. So now we're not leaking. The guys also just put some coating on this whole trunk because it was just a greasy mess from us dumping hydraulic oil everywhere. So everything's new, rewired. You can see everything's nice and clean in here. We actually have actually a huge trunk still even with all this hydraulic stuff in here which looking at it this is a giant trunk before hydraulics so crazy so the impala is ready to bounce not bounce we're not going to bounce it until i strengthen the frame it's ready to go up and down all right we're gonna get the bronco and i'll show you what we did to that Don't go anywhere, okay? I think I messed that up. Bronco exhaust is done. We'll show that to you in just a minute. We have just a couple things left on it. We gotta get, the transmission needs a little bit of a something, uh, cause it's not shifting into second gear. So I think we just have a sensor unplugged or something. So we're gonna get someone who knows more about transmissions to come look at that. We can't figure it out. What else? Put the top on it. Top, the hood, the bumpers. Yep, we're waiting to get the tack back. We, yeah. there's something wrong with our tack, but uh, they're fixing that. And then I have the title in the back, got the title from Tyler's dad uh, yesterday. So I'm gonna go get it titled and then we gotta get it inspected and then that thing is gonna be street legal and ready to rock. So we're this close with the Bronco, very close, which is crazy because what did we start that, four years ago or something? Yeah, yeah it's been a while, <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Bronco is a much bigger project than I thought it would be, but we are almost done with it. Okay, so there's our exhaust coming from the left side going under the transmission there. The right side's over there. They come back here. We actually have two mufflers and we wanted it to be loud but not like open headers loud like it was. So there's one muffler there, one muffler there. Then they go over here. So we have dual exhaust all the way out. Just noticed something though. For, this doesn't look that great. Uh, they didn't really finish it very well, but that's something we can fix. But then, <laughs> Burke noticed is very close to this wheel, which of course that wheel is going to come up. I mean, this thing's made to go off road, so that wheel will smash it. And then I noticed it's touching our spring. So yeah, not super happy. That's like very obvious. Uh, it's also touching that uh, parking brake cable there. That's very obvious to anyone who knows anything about cars, which a muffler shop should, that you can't have your exhaust touching something really anything, but especially something that moves. So we're gonna have to lop that off. It won't be hard, we'll, we'll fix that. We got, I mean, the hard stuff up around the engine, all the bends and stuff, we don't have a pipe bender, and so we couldn't do any of that, but they got all that done. We'll just probably lop these off. We can just have them dump here, honestly, because this is a wreck. I don't know why they thought that that 
was a good idea, but it's not. So I was hoping that that was going to be better, but that's what it is. Just another uh, hold back on the Bronco. Also, I went to the tax office today to get the title switch in my name, and they're closed. They took a break. It's not a holiday today. They just decided we're not working today. So now the title's not going to sw get switched in my name today either. But some good news is this beautiful house on a hill is coming along great. Uh, you haven't had a video in a long time and people are starting to wonder what happened to the not abandoned, not small house on a hill. We still got it. It is still being worked on. A lot of stuff has happened, but like, I just haven't been excited about it because it's like, it's not anything that's like one subject that's video worthy. Like before it's like, we are putting all the, you know, the sheetrock in today, and so we filmed that. We're putting, you know, the back porch, and we're building the roof out there. This is like a bunch of like nickel and dime things, like just tons of little things, like putting switch covers on, and putting all the bulbs in the, the lights and everything. Just, it's just not exciting. It's not video worthy in my opinion. I, I really like this series, and I wanna make every video really good and I could make videos on all the updates right now, but they wouldn't be that good, and so I'm just holding off. But we are about to hit a big milestone in the house, and I will be making a video, and then we have a couple more big milestones coming after that, and then we are moving in. We are actually moving in really, really soon, like a month from now, <laughs> hopefully. We're waiting on stuff. All this stuff that's going on in the world makes ordering everything really hard. We're waiting on some key components to get into this house. And once we have those, we can move in, hopefully. But I did get something I ordered, I'll show it to you now. It has absolutely zero to do with this house. I mean, I guess it has a little bit to do with this house. You know, keeps it from burning down. Got stuff for the fire truck. You guys actually haven't seen the fire, let me just show you. For those who forgot what the fire truck is, uh, it's this, this beauty. A 1998 Stuart and Stevenson's LMTV. It's a deuce and a half, basically. The new deuce and a half. And I have this huge tank which you guys have seen, but I haven't actually done anything with it yet because I ordered a new hose and a new hose reel. Holy cow, it's bright and it's really hard to climb with one hand and it took forever to get them in because everything takes forever now. This is the hose. So this is the hose I did have. It was one that collapses. It's a two inch diameter hose. This one is rigid and won't kink up. And it's a one inch diameter hose. The firefighter who I bought this truck from actually told me I need to get a one inch hose. And I was like, two inches, or that'd be better. He was right, I was wrong. And then I got this beauty. Look at this uh, hose reel here. This thing took forever to get in. But we have a nice hose reel that is going to be perfect for this thing. Basically, it'll all be rolled up on there. I think I'm gonna mount it right there on the end over here. God, it's gonna be so good. I can't wait. Water comes in, yeah, right here. So that's where you actually hook the water on. And then it goes through this pipe and it comes out here which is where our hose will screw on. And the hose wraps around this thing, and there's a little crank handle there that I think you hook up to this side. And you can crank it to roll it up, or you can pull it to unroll it. This looks like some kind of lock or something. Yep, that looks like a lock, so it can't spin. Anyway, that's gonna be super cool. And we'll keep the ranch from burning down. So the water will be in the tank, will come out of the tank, go to this pump, will come out of the pump, go to a hose reel, which will be mounted right here, and then I'll just pull the hose out, put out the fire, save the day, save the world. And it's gonna be all hard piped. So last time I used this flexible suction hose uh, to get the water from tank to there, and then I just had, I had no hose reel, I just had the hose all jumbled up. So it was just a mess, like, I realized it would take me forever to actually put out a fire, because it was just always a mess of stuff. So I'm gonna have a hard pipe, which means non-flexible pipe coming from this. I'm gonna cut a hole in this bed, go straight down to that, and then it'll be hard piped from this to hose reel. And then everything will be bolted down, very rigid, very easy. I'm gonna try to put it in the easiest places to access ever. Uh, just like my first fire truck, it went through several iterations. This is already on now iteration two. Uh, we have a whole new tank, whole new hose, and I'm, I'm just kind of figuring out what works. I don't know anything about this stuff, but I like learning about it. And I've learned that this, was not the hose for me. You gotta pick the right hose for you. That's what I've learned here. I, I have one more serious note to talk to you guys about. Uh, I need you guys who know about trees to tell me if this idea 
will work. This area right here is a road, as you can see, and it's a little tight right here. I can fit the five ton through it. We have fit dump trucks through it, but uh, you can see on this tree, it's been hit multiple times by things. Trailers, dump trucks. I mean, there's a big hit there, another hit there, another hit there, another hit there. So far, it's only been by things that don't really matter. I haven't like rammed my F-350 into it or anything, but I'm worried that there will be some day where I'm not so lucky and I will think I'm clearing it and I will just hit that thing on my truck. This one's good, it's leaning away, this one is leaning in. Here are our options. Leave it, hope for the best. Probably not the best option because I do that a lot and it never happens. Option two, chop it down. Problem solved, right? We could chop that down. But the problem with that solution to our problem is that's a nice oak tree. It's a red oak, I think, or a Spanish oak. I think they're called the same thing. Spanish oak, red oak. You guys tell me uh, what this tree is. But it's an oak tree. It's a nice one. Here's what a nice fall leaf looks like on it. Is that a Spanish oak? The problem is I don't really want to cut a nice tree down. It's, it's a big, tall, beautiful tree. Option one, leave it. Option two, chop it. In comes option three. Matt's idea. I'm a thinker but I have no idea if this will work, so I need y'all to help me. What if we do both? We chop it and we leave it. Okay, hear me out, hear me out, here's what I'm thinking. This thing makes a real weird bend here, and if it didn't have this bend here throwing it into the road over here, it would be fine. So I'm thinking, what if we cut the bend out? Okay, I've seen videos with much smaller trees, I will say, much smaller trees, where they like, take a tree, cut it, cut another tree, and they take the top off of one, put it on the bottom of the other, they tape it all up, and they hold it all together, and it heals back that way. So can we do that with an oak tree that's like almost two feet wide? What if we cut a wedge out, right? Cut a line here, maybe leave a little bit there, and cut a line here, right? And we have a big chain hooked up there, chained to a couple other trees that way, and we put a bunch of pressure on it and we bend it to where it's straight. Like I'm talking, we take this bend out of it, straighten it up as much as possible. Maybe not all the way, but like, what if we took that and brought it to there? Would it live is the question. If we're gonna do that, what's the best way to do it? I don't know. Like, is it like, no matter if you cut that tree, if you cut more than half of it, it's gonna die no matter what, like above there. Or is it like, no Matt, if you cut, uh, as long as you leave 25%, it'll get enough water to go up there. Or is it like, Matt, you need to only do that during these months, because if you do it during the winter or you do it during the summer, it's not gonna, I just need to know. So tree guys, possible? And if so, how? Demolitia, I need your help. Thank you so much for watching this episode of all kinds of random stuff around the ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare!